Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Dr. Lee Whitmore. I am the Vice President for Education at Focusrite Group. Focusrite Group includes Focusrite, Novation, Sequential, Oberheim, Atom Audio, Sonox, Martin Audio, Optimal Audio, Linear Research, and uh, Timex. And today's session, we're very happy to have you all here. This is our third annual Career and Technical Education webinar, wherein we're looking at best practices on funding, on programs. We have practitioners, we have experts on funding at the district level. We have building uh, principals and administrators today from two amazing districts. The first is the Essex County Career and Technical Education High School District in Newark, New Jersey. And the second is um, Lawndale High School in Centinella Valley Unified School District in Southern California. And so uh, we're gonna kick it right off. Uh, our producer, if you could bring our panelists in, we'll jump right into introductions and then on to conversation. This is a blast. We've got some really, really terrific experts here today, everybody. So for today's Focus Rate Group in Education, Career and Technical Education webinar for 2024, let's get things started. First, we're going to go around the room, uh, the virtual room, that is, and I'm going to ask our panelists to introduce themselves in just about a minute about what you do and uh, what your role is. And then we'll go from there and jump right into questions about programs, funding, and all kinds of other fun stuff that our audience is looking forward to. One last thing before I start the introductions off to our audience, please, watching on our stream and uh, the Focus Right YouTube channel, send us questions. Uh, we have uh, a team member of mine, Dave Riley, there to answer questions. And for those of you who would like to pass questions in during the conversation for our expert panelists, please do. I will keep an eye open for those. Our producer, Jordan Nickerson, will, and we'll pass them into our panelists as best we can. So with no further ado, we're going to jump in. And from the Centinella Valley Unified School District, um, High School District, I'm going to start with Hatha Parish. Hatha, tell us a little bit about what you do. Hi, and good afternoon, everybody. Um, my title is Director of Federal and State Programs for Sentinella Valley Union High School District. We have three comprehensive high schools in um, the urban area of Los Angeles County, you might have heard of it. Um, we serve three uh, CTE pathways within our three comprehensive high schools. Fantastic. Thank you, Hatha. It's great to have you here. Let's stick with uh, Centinella Valley and Lawndale High School first, one of the high schools uh, that focus on career and technical education in that district. And then we'll go to Essex County in New Jersey. Next, let's have Robert Rodriguez introduce himself. Robert, tell everybody uh, in our audience a little bit about who you are and what you do. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for actually welcoming here. So my name is Robert Rodriguez. I'm a CT pathway specialist here and um, my most my major actually focuses to help the CTE teachers here on campus, also help academy teachers in all levels from uh, budgeting, from uh, pedagogy, instructional, and any way possible where I can support the CTE teachers and academy teachers here at Londo High. Fantastic, thank you, Robert, great to have you here. And next, uh, a practitioner, a fabulous teacher in that district who is at Lawndale High School, uh, Luis Rodriguez. Uh, please tell our audience a little bit about you and what you do. Hi, everyone. My name is Luis Rodriguez, and at Lawndale High School, I direct the Music and Recording Arts Pathway, uh, teach kids a little bit about fundamentals of music, and we're pivoting more into the recording side of the music industry um, uh, as we try to future-proof kids for their careers in music. Welcome, Luis and Hafa and Robert from Centinella Valley Unified um, High School District uh, in Southern California. Great to have you here. And next, all the way on the other side of the country, on the other coast, we have folks from Newark, New Jersey, the Essex County Schools, um, technical High School District. I'm going to start with uh, Mr. Dolan. John, tell us a little bit about you and what you do. Good evening. Yes, we're on the we're on the east, but we're on the East Coast. My name is John Dolan, Director of Adult Career and Technical Education for the Essex County Schools of Technology. We have three comprehensive uh, CTE high schools, and we're just proud to be here today to provide any assistance to folks who are looking to figure out how to enhance their programs. Thank you. 
Great to have you, John. Thank you. And last but not least, our good friend, Mark Beckett. Mark and Luis have been in these sessions before, and it's always a pleasure to have you. And it's so nice to have support at your uh, school administrative level and district administrative level. So now from Essex County, from the Donald Payne School, Donald M. Payne Senior, I think it is, um, high school. Mark Beckett, tell us about you. Welcome. Uh, I am Mark Beckett from the uh, Essex County Donald M. Payne School of Technology here in Newark, New Jersey. Uh, I teach the music and entertainment production course here um, where we teach ninth through 12th graders, uh, all of the backstage kind of stuff. Uh, we do uh, front of house mixing, monitor mixing, stage hand work, all of those kind of things. And then we do music production. So we do the gamut because uh, we have a variety of students with us. Uh, I'm 21 years in this district and still having a blast. It's great to be here with you all this evening. Fantastic to have all of you here. Thank you so very, very much. We'll jump right into questions and talk about what you do, what career and technical education um, programs are. Of course, we, this is a focus right group in education um, produced event and webinar. So I, I would encourage everybody at the district level to talk about all your programs and anecdotes, but particularly, and we'll kick off with our practitioners, our teachers who have a lot of experience. Um, let's talk music and audio technology first. And you know, let's talk about what it is and what your programs are. So I'm going to go to back to Mark and then to Luis. Um, Mark, tell us, you mentioned, you know, behind the scenes, backstage. I know from visiting your school that um, there's a lot that goes on, uh, including live sound production, audio, music. I've seen your labs. I've seen your practice stages for show production. I've, I've sat on the stage and had your students mix a conversation with me, and what a pleasure. Tell everybody in the audience what your program at Donald M. Payne Senior High School is like. What are you teaching? What are they doing? And you can dig in a little bit for everybody. Okay. Uh, I'll be glad to. Uh, as you can see, actually, in my background here, this is my classroom. Uh, this is my stage. Uh, so the kids get a chance, the opportunity to uh, to provide vision, to provide uh, emotional sense when it comes down to production. Uh, and that's one of the things I like to pass off, even starting at our freshman year. Uh, my freshmen, they come in and we do a uh, we do an exercise called getting to know you. And they walk up on that stage and we try to break the ice with stage fright, um, put a microphone and say, who are you? What would you like to do? Um, so we start off right from there to get them exposure to the stage. And then um, we move on to, you know, music production, digging inside the DAWs. Uh, we do a lot of logic, we work with Logic Pro. And then um, from 10th grade, 11th grade starts our, a lot of our certification programs. We do a lot of certification. So when we talk about live music production, uh, we're talking about uh, moving audio from one place to another. Uh, so we are we are big Dante fans. We are big Focus Right fans. Um, not just a plug for them, but I've uh, I've enjoyed Focus Right for many many years, and Lee, you know all about that. And we'll get into it a little later on. But we do Dante's Level One uh, certification. We do OSHA Ten certification for our students so they understand safety. Uh, we also do, um, we have, we move to our seniors and they do um, Pro Tools 101 and 110 certifications. So they come out with those kind of certifications. And um, we just keep uh, their capstone project. They have to put together entire production from the ground floor. Um, some, some of our students are artists. So students that are not artists in our class, they become the stage hands. They become all the audio engineers and we do video in the background and, and we start in the stream. We have our radio production program. So there's a lot that happens uh, from ninth through 12th grade. By the time they get out of here, we have our apprenticeship program that we are part of for the stagehand union. So we have students that move into that part of the world and then they move right off into the world. And we'll talk about some of those success stories a little later on. So that's what we do from ninth through 12th grade. And we're super excited about uh where our program is, where our programs are headed, it's it's even getting. I I can't even say that. Wow, we we topped it. Um, we have so many other things that we're about to do, and the students are about to get uh, a full array of you know how to set up video walls. Uh, you know, <laughs> so we're we're looking forward to all of those kind of things, uh, and that's what our program is is generally really all about. So we're digging in. 
Thanks, Mark. And over to you, uh, Luis, tell us uh, about your program at Lawndale High School. Right on. Yeah, it's always awesome to hear Mark and all the stuff he's doing because I'm like, I'm running right behind him uh, trying to catch up with that stuff. But yeah, like been working on this for about uh, seven years now, I want to say on this program. Uh, we, you know, I know COVID happened, but we don't talk about that. But those are some years that kind of have it in there too. That kind of gave us a bit of a monkey wrench. But the goals are pretty similar and comprehensive to what Mark is doing. Um, we're trying to catch up with getting to the Dante certification side of things, though. Uh, we're working on getting our um, rooms uh, retrofitted for that too. We got some funding, and we got some. Uh, we're gonna be getting some work done so we can run the infrastructure this year. And then, thanks to uh, Lee and the support from Focus Right, we've been um, we're moving towards that direction to get the kids the tools that they need. Um, we start off in their freshman year teaching them uh, some of the fundamentals of, of reading music and how to play music. And uh, I use the analogs of the drums first to kind of under, help them understand phrasing and certain principles of music. And then second semester, we move on uh, understanding how to do phrasing into the keyboard. And we talk about melody and how to use the principles of drum phrasing, grooves and fills into creating some sort of motifs and some sort of variations of those motifs to create melodies. and then teach them a little bit more about creating chords, chord progressions. And uh, by the end of their freshman year, they fully produce the song in MIDI where they've programmed all their stuff uh, just using MIDI. And it, it helps them a lot with understanding the principles of a DAW and fundamentals of music. And uh, 10th and 11th grade, they're kind of finding what instrument they want to stick to uh, or what role they want to stick to, whether it's going to be instrumental performer side, similar to what Mark was saying, uh, not all the kids want to be on the stage, but all the a lot of kids want to be involved. So we end up with those two different trajectories where we have the performers and the technicians. Um, and similar to Bark, the capstone project for our kids is we have an end of the year showcase called Lawndale Palooza, which is the the kids they plan it, they uh, coordinate it, they create their bands, and we've been working with uh, industry partner Music Forward Foundation, they've been supporting with teaching our kids marketability, how to create press releases and how to really promote and, and the business side of, of these things. So uh, we're, we're pretty similar in that we're, we're trying to run the gamut of the music side where we have space for our performers, our technicians, and now we're starting to learn a little bit about the business side of music as well. And the next step is uh, Dante certification and Pro Tools certification. So these kids can record all of their music in a prof professional environment and then put it out there using industry level tools. Fantastic, Luis. And I think one thing we could talk about, Luis, that Mark's doing is to complement your Audinate Dante certifications. We certainly can offer uh, Focusrite RedNet um, certifications that go alongside of that. So they're short for our audience. Um, they're less intensive than the Audinate programs, but uh, Focusrite RedNet Core um, takes less than an hour and your students can walk away with a badge, something they can add to their LinkedIn profile and then uh, Dante Level 2 and um, our focus right red net advanced certifications or something um, that could be considered as well. Uh, I'm going to um, go back to Luis and Mark just briefly, and then the rest of our panel, I'm coming your way. Don't worry. But one thing I'd, I'd like to ask, and I would say uh, um, to our uh, district and building level administrators, um, feel free to fill in and jump in after Luis and Mark answer this next question, but this is a session talking about, and we have experts here in career and technical education. When we talk about the music and audio pathway programs and um, the certifications that both Mark's students and Luis's students are um, acquiring over time, uh, Mark, I'm gonna come back to you and then to Luis. What are your, what are your students doing when they're finishing their programs? Where are they working? Give us some example, examples. And I'd say a couple of things. One, who's going out into the workforce and give us an example. Okay. And then same thing for Luis. Like where, where are your students ending up? Are they going to community college or some of them going for um, 
you know, undergraduate associates degrees, or are they going right out into the workforce? I mean, I, I know that they're that all of this is happening, but I think our audience would like to hear it from both of our teachers. So Mark, you first, and then Luis on that one. All right, you got it. So uh, I am so very proud of uh, what's been happening lately in our program and our students that have graduated from our program. Um, and I'll go all the way back to 2017. Uh, I have a 2017 grad that started in my program um, who just fell in love with the energy of the program, um, knew nothing about music. Now it's all about music. She ended up graduating in 2017, going off to NIAC to study uh, music, music education, because she wanted to teach the same way she got taught. Um, and a few years later, which was this past year, she is now teaching in our district the music production course at one of our other buildings. So we are super excited about that. And she's just excited. Yeah. She has her students excited as she was in my course. She's just taking the ball and running. So we're, we're I mean, ecstatic. And that's just one example. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll jump up to the class of 2022. Uh, we have a student who went off into our apprenticeship program with uh, IATSE. Um, he started, you know, doing some some work in the apprenticeship program. Um, you know, they do it here as 12th graders. Um, they take them out to work um, as they teach them, you know, some courses in, in music, music education, and stage production. And all the things they, what happened was, he ended up working at uh, Prudential Center, right? And the Prudential Center, they, they, they have gigs there all the time. Um, Going into the Potential Center, he was just as humble as could be. Then they moved him off to PRG, which is, everybody knows PRG is the one of the biggest distributors of audio, video, and lighting around the world. They supply, you know, off-Broadway, Broadway, all sorts of things. So he was working there. Um, and his humble self, uh, he took all of the knowledge that he had uh, from our program, and he took it there to PRG and love to ask questions, always digging for information, but was one of the nicest guys. Uh, so someone offered him a position uh, to do a week long uh, series that one of these audio engineers were doing for $400 a day. He, heard, he turned it down because his manager at PRG said, no, no, so he got humble right after that. He ended up working at the public theater as an A2 audio engineer in New York City. And now he, uh, he advanced from there. A production company saw him. He is now on an eight-state tour as a DJ and an audio engineer for a dance company. So he's doing touring now uh, for about eight states. And uh, he's audio engineer for that. I said, you know what? Forget this. I hired him for my church as my audio engineer. <laughs> so uh, those are just some of the things that are exciting about my students. Then we have some that are going off performing. Um, they are, do go off to college. I do have some students down at Rowan University that's taking a music course down there. Um, she's, she's often now in the music business and music entrepreneurship. I just put them onto my, my board uh, as their youth council. Um, so these two are rocking and rolling. And there are a couple of more after that, but those are the kind of things that the students are doing. They keep in touch with me every day. We make plans, and that's how I love to to be daddy. <laughs> Absolutely love it, Mark. And uh, interesting that you mentioned Rowan. I have a, a meeting with them this week. Awesome. They have a fantastic program. I just saw those folks at the New Jersey Music Educators Association meeting Atlantic City, where I spoke on a panel about careers in okay. the music and audio industry. And yeah, another significant RedNet deployment, great studios, and that, that's a program that's delivering great skill development at the at the college and university level. Everybody that's a university campus in New Jersey. Uh, Luis, over to you, tell us, a, give us an anecdote or two about what your students have done, where are they going, where are they working after they're in your program? And then I'm gonna pivot to the to our administrators here on the, on the panel, but Luis, you first, tell us a little bit about what uh, what your grads are doing. For sure, at the nativity of the program, uh, a lot of it was uh, performance-based and kind of getting the gig or planning a gig kind of a focus. We weren't doing too much about recording. Um, so a lot of the kids that ended up graduating here back 2015, 16, 
um, they started kind of building their own little community groups that would just book and generate shows in the area. And uh, I ended up having the privilege of working alongside them where we were planning a summer performance for a local brewery. They were doing like a festival uh, in the summer. And uh, this was right after the quarantine lifted for COVID. So we ended up calling it a pint of summer. Uh, and we coordinated a couple of different bands to perform. And then uh, the brewery connected with a bunch of vendors to sell uh, food and little trinkets and stuff like that. And it was really cool to, uh, we were, my band and myself, we were the ones that were running the show and the sound, but it was cool like having these bands that were now known in the scene that were part of my program at one point performing there and bringing in a crowd and like kind of mingling with them and seeing who they who they're like as adults now uh so that was kind of cool uh and now uh we've we've kind of developed a further relationship with our um community college with the camino college uh with the commercial music pathway that continues on there with dr david moyer and john Monet, you know to uh, lee uh, a lot of our students have been going there to continue their studies uh, because of what, like our local kind of connections that there, there's this uh, thing called the South Bay Promise where students from the area get to go to community college for free for the first two years. So a lot of the kids take advantage of that because there's a pretty good music program there. Uh, and then some of them, uh, one of my alumni is at UC Riverside and she's one of the She's like an inaugural class to UC Riverside's brand new UC, uh, uh, brand new music industry kind of uh, plan of study because they didn't have a music industry plan of study before. They didn't have a degree with that focus anymore. But this semester, they just started that. So she's one of those students that got accepted into it. And uh, that's going to be taking that as a, as her career. So uh, looking forward to more success stories and hopefully I have a really cool story like Mark where I have one of my kids coming back here to help me out too. <laughs> I'm sure you will. Love it. Love it. Um, great anecdotes from both Mark and from Luis. Uh, I'm going to go next to, to Robert and then um, to John. Robert, since we just heard from Luis, given your role, let our audience know um, your thoughts on the on Luis's program, how you've supported it. Uh, are there a couple things you'd like to share about what you see um, being in the building and watching Luis's program develop? Uh, yes. Um, so just on my role as a CT pathway specialist so far, working with Luis, um, you know, I've I've learned a lot myself. I'm coming actually from the math educator world, and I've learned so much about all the equipment, wiring, and everything that requires just to put up a show, and the hard work that the students actually put on. Um, it's ridiculous, you know, it's just so many things, so many little things that I would never imagine when I will see a show. Then now I see the students that they're, you know, hooking up all the wires and setting up the stage and it's just so much work and it, it's it's time consuming. And I could see the passion in Luis and his students about, you know, how to put up a show together. And, but also I support Luis in other ways, you know, getting his equipment, you know, budgeting for his equipment, you know, there's a lot of tech things going on here. And, uh, you know, just recently I do purchases for him based on his budget that he has. And um, so, and, you know, making sure that he gets those softwares that he's required to know, um, you know, that way he can continue to keep updated with his skills uh, in order to transfer it to his students. And not only that, I also, you know, meet with him on a, a biweekly setting where we can catch up, where we can, he can sh share with me, you know, this is where I need support in, and then this is where I come in. So some, many times he tells me, you know, I need, I need this type of technology, or I need this uh, software, I need this for our students. And so I do the research, uh, and, um, and he does the research as well. We both do the research, and we try to make it down where we can get, you know, like, the objects or materials that he actually needs in order to actually continue to perform. And not only that, for upcoming school years, you know, what, what are the things you're going to need for the next students, the next three, four years of students coming up? And so this is where I come into play, just helping them on a weekly basis, um, you know, supporting him in any way, because it could be a burnout, you know, just so many. Not, I know Luis teaches, you know, every day, you know, from in the morning all the way to three and also has to put up the show you know also have to set up the students after school to uh you know do a performance like you know they're i know they're practicing for alana palooza but not on, even before that 
they already put up some shows for our schools, you know, for our events, you know, and so that that all is time and energy. And so I'm here to actually just to support him in any way possible, both financially and emotionally and as a uh, as a as a former instructional coach as well. Fantastic. Thank you, Robert. And thanks for all the support that you provide, <coughs> excuse me, for Luis and for the students in your programs. And speaking of um, tech gear, um, purchasing, funding, um, and the expense of all of this, because I know it's not um, inconsequential. Uh, Hath, I'm going to have John share just a little bit about what happens um, in his support of Mark, and then we're going to pivot to talking Perkins funds, how those are delivered through the states. Um, so I'm, co I'm coming your way. Uh, but Mr. Dolan, we're going to come back around to you and like uh, the question that I posed to uh, Robert. Tell us a little bit about your role and what you see in Mark's program, what stands out, and the kinds of things that you do in your position to support that. Well, when I when I first met Mark, uh, I actually was moving to his building in West Caldwell as his new building principal. And one of the things I made it a point to do was to sit down with all of the CTE teachers uh, and, and talk to them and ask them what their vision was. Um, one of the things that I had always thought when we were calling it originally visual and performing arts, I was wondering where there was room for those students who may not have wanted to be on stage. And I think that was a critical pivot point for us as we started to move towards where we are today. Um, and that was that was 16 years ago. And we've kind of sat together um, you know, many, many times and talked about what can we do to get more folks involved in this that don't necessarily have to be behind the microphone. They can be behind the scenes and, and, and really assisting in productions because the production piece is a very short moment in time compared to the preparation piece as we, we get involved in this whole um, you know, thing that we call music production at you know, Donald M. Payne and our West Caldwell Tech campus in Essex. Um, I know we're going to talk about Perkins in a little bit, but it's been an unbelievable 16 year journey so far with Mark. We've watched our program morph from more just of a performance based piece to where we are now with the purchase of some of our uh, focus right equipment and those other nuances to the program that we're actually adding. So we're extremely excited. And uh, certainly when we get over towards the Perkins side of the conversation, I'll have uh, more information for everybody. Awesome. Thank you, John. And and that is coming next. Um, I have to pause and say when we were rehearsing as a as a group here, our, our audience, so that, you know, we all get together and have a chat a week or so before. And I'm going to just uh, uh, call out um, something really fun that happened with Mark. John had a really good reason for not making the uh, the rehearsal, the dry run for this event. And um, I don't know which of you want to go first, but you had a you had a dignitary in the school that day and everybody's smiling because we were quite yeah. impressed at the honor. So I don't know, John, do you um, want to tell us a little bit about that? Uh, yeah, I can start off and then and then Mark can chime in. We we work pretty well side by side. We've been doing it for a long time. So we had the pleasure of a visit from Secretary of Education, Miguel Cardona. Uh, who was checking out some of the locations that received uh, funding for a PIM grant, which was a grant for Perkins Innovation and Modernization. And we were able to be successful in our grant writing and be one of 19 schools throughout the country that received funding. I believe there were 300 plus applications or so. So we're very proud of that. Um, and then now the heavy lifting comes when you have to implement all of the things that you wrote down in the grant. And I see some of my colleagues on this in this forum laughing. Um, they may have been there as well. Um, but it's to deal with career connected pathways. And I can uh, you know, elaborate a little bit later, but I know Mark can speak to uh, the visit from the secretary as we did spend uh, a lot of time in his classroom with a lot of dignitaries and the secretary. Yeah, they walked in and they ganged up on me. <laughs> Our cameras and security and they they walk in and the the honored thing that got me which was so special was there were only two CETE courses that he visited when he came here. And my class was one. <laughs> so it would we were so excited when he came into the class. We had some kids that were 
working on a project and uh, they were all on stage and they were performing for a couple of little things. And uh, he walks in and we have this great big conversation. We, you know, laugh like we knew each other forever. So I'll tell you a real quick story about that because uh, my wife and I, my daughter, she's a senior here and she's getting ready to go off to college. So we're looking at all sorts of scholarships and so on. So during that weekend before his visit, uh, he was on with these three young ladies um, talking about, you know, funding and scholarships and where they can go and what they need to do. So he had mentioned a, a song, uh, which was hilarious. Um, so it was an old school song. So um, I remembered that. I said, you know what? When he comes to my class, I'm going to play that for her. So he comes into class and we have this conversation. Then I say, oh, I got something else for you, uh, secretary. Uh, so watch this. Uh, you remember last weekend you talked about this and I dropped the song. And the song was, you could get with this or you can get with that. You can get with this. And he just lost his mind. He was like, you were on that webinar? I say, yeah, we were on there. <laughs> so it felt like we just knew each other forever. So he started talking to the kids and uh, telling them, you know, what this was going to do. We're going to put this. We're going to record this for you all. Put this on a website. And we're going to make sure that the president sees this. So we're still waiting for that part. But hey, <laughs> but uh, it was a great visit. He loved the class. He was like, this classroom is amazing. Mm. So we're, we're excited about that. So that was our fun. Well, to, 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 to both of you in the district, what an honor and congratulations on being selected uh, for that funding stream and uh, for that lovely visit. What a special day. And John, we missed you on the rehearsal, but certainly you had something more important to do. So uh, no issue whatsoever. Um, one of the, we're going to pivot now in conversation. Um, so next two things uh, to give our audience a head up, heads up and also our panelists. Let's talk per Perkins, let's, let's talk funding, and let's talk about other funding streams that help support program. Then we'll come back and talk a little bit more uh, tech, shop, um, what kind of gear, what are the things that you're doing to build skills? Because there's certainly, from my view, uh, working uh, in my seat at Focus Right Group, there are trends in the industry that I know Mark and Luis and their programs are, are um, following and developing skill bases with their students so that they can work effectively. Um, but one thing that we learned last year, in our, um, this is our third, as I mentioned, um, CTE webinar, uh, as focus right group in education. And last year, we had a lot of conversation about um, teaching uh, the teachers, practitioners. We had a, a wonderful visit from the California Music Educators Association president and Fennell from the San Diego Unified District and spoke about um, collaboration and support and the differences between working in career and technical education and what traditional arts education are in districts because they are certainly uh, funded in different ways, and there's some crossover and collaboration in some districts and not in others. Um, but Hafa, I'm going to come to you now, and thank you for being patient as we uh, got through the background on the programs, but I, I know you have significant experience in this area, and it's a big question, and again, I will let our audience know if you have questions to pass through about what we've talked about, what we're going to talk about now, or what comes next, I'm monitoring the YouTube chat. Feel free to ask them. We're happy to take them. But um, Hatha, t tell us about your role and um, what you do to help uh, successfully su secure support and funding. Tell us a little bit about Perkins and your expertise there. Um, let's start there. All right, awesome. So um, I started to manage Perkins in our district probably about 20 years ago. Um, and that was about one of the only sources of funding that our schools had for CTE programs. Um, and then within that, though, we did also have um, what we call California Partnership Academies. It's a, it's a California grant that provides extra funding for um, sequential learning um, that's in a smaller environment. So we did have some of those, and then we had the Perkins. And, um, you know, I just kind of fell in love with the whole concept of CTE and really wanted to see how we could build it further and further and further. And so, you know, learning more about what it meant to be CTE um, and then, you know, finding creative ways to utilize the funds that we had in the Perkins. And then um, another thing that California has done is doing something called an LCAP, which is like local um, funding giving the, the local districts some leverage on their funding. 
Uh, so, you know, one of the early things when we first wrote our first LCAP, which was about 10 years ago, uh, making sure that, so we had Perkins, we had the CPA, but then also having these supplemental and concentration funds, which because of where we're at, our, de our demographics between our um, socioeconomic disadvantaged students, um, as well as just the, the local economy. Um, so we get a lot of supplemental and concentration funding. And so, you know, really making the case for um, for the fact that CTE programs are high interest, they um, they get students in into school, um, and which is really what we want. I mean, at the end of the day, it's great, and I and I hope lots of um, you know Louisa students graduate and and become. Um, stay in this pathway, but at a minimum, um, I think it's fantastic that they were excited while they were in high school, um, that they learned some skills that they, you know, are going to use regardless of what their career profession is going to be, um, because they're learning how to interact and how to be um, professionals while they're in high school. And that's, that's just amazing. So anyway, so, um, and then it's just, and I'm assuming it's the same way across the nation. Um, unfortunately, I'm not super expert in the whole nationwide movements, but in California, boy, in the last 10 years, well, I'd probably say nine years, um, our legislation has really taken an interest in CTE. And I kind of, you know, I feel like they did something similar to what I did when I first learned about it. I was like, dang, this is the way education should be. Um, you know, we really need to be giving students real world experiences. We really need to be working with our post-secondary partners, our industry partners, you know, talking with them, getting them into our programs, using funding so that the the cameras, the equipment, the lab that our students um, have access to is actually the same level as out there so that when they graduate from high school, they have like real employable skills um, and they have options. Of course, all of our kids are ready to go to college, um, but also maybe sometimes most people need to get a job while they're in college, right? So we're giving them some real skills that are above and beyond um, potentially, you know, what the typical student fresh out of high school might be doing not to... Um, so anyway, uh, I don't know, did I answer? <laughs> um, I also yeah. had thrown in the chat. So there are, oh, I had mentioned that California is yeah, kind of um, exploded over the last several years. So um, I think uh, one of one of our folks here is gonna be putting either in the chat or um, on our page. There are several um, funding sources. If you are in California or that I know are specific to California, but there might be something similar in your states. Um, but we do something called a K-12 Strong Workforce Program. Um, and that is, that is, um, that's been great. It's been about nine years. Um, then there's also the CTE Incentive Grant Funding. Um, actually, that one's been nine years. The K-12 SWP has actually been, I think, six years. Um, and then another one I wanted to share with you guys is the California Apprenticeship Initiative. Uh, so this is another one that's huge and that's super cool because um, when we think about apprentices, we typically think the trades. Um, but what we've been working on here, especially because Los Angeles area, all of California, very high in the arts, media, and entertainment is, as careers and as an industry. And so we've been working, and Luis also, he mentioned Music Forward Foundation. That's one of the programs. So we're looking at developing pre-apprenticeships and apprenticeships um, within arts, media, and entertainment um, to be able to get students having this pathway from directly from high school um, into apprenticeships and then into the workforce. Um, and I feel like there was one more, but maybe, nope, maybe that was it. So. No, no, that's a great overview, Hatha. And I, I was going to mention before when Louis, Louis mentioned, so the Music Forward Foundation is a part of Live Nation, isn't it, if I remember correctly? Yeah, so that's a fabulous um, a fabulous connection to, to be had and given the types of skills for show production um, and all the music business opportunities around that. Um, yeah, I'll give them a shout out. I know they do very good work. I've had to, uh, the opportunity to um, to work with them over the years. Um, uh, thank you, Hatha. Uh, we'll come back to you. I'm going to pivot over to Mr. Uh, Mr. Dolan. John, tell us a little bit, what would you add to compliment? You, you mentioned we're helping to support Louise funding. Um, you heard a little bit from Hatha about uh, state specific resources and funds and programs in California. Um, Perkins funding is more than 6 billion from the federal government. 
But here in the United States, um, education programming and uh, law and support is um, mostly funded and, and directed state from the state. So programs with uh, receiving Perkins, Perkins money have state specific um, application. Um, tell us a little bit about what's going on in, in New Jersey, how that affects what you do in Essex County and how that trickles down through you directly to support what Mark's doing. Uh, sure. So I am the Perkins administrator for the district. So I'm responsible for our Perkins application and grant to our state agency. Um, and one of the, the critical pieces of that funding is we ensure that that money gets out to the classrooms. I think that's a, a, a big thing as it relates to what we're trying to do uh, in support of the efforts uh, for equipment, for supplies, uh, those things that any district would not normally be able to fund as they may be some bigger ticket items. Um, you know, these are opportunities that the Perkins grant provides for us. We're always focused on our careers that are high skill, high wage and in demand. But as things start to shift a little bit, there's other uh, funding opportunities out there in the state of New Jersey that they've added. Um, the names are somewhat similar to what California is doing. Um, there's a gains grant that we're actually going to be looking at. It's called Growing Apprenticeships in Non-Traditional Sectors. And then uh, we have a PACE grant, which is Pre-Apprentice in Career Education. So we're actually looking at that funding as well to supplement. I mean, we're very, very blessed that we were able to be one of the, the 19 recipients for the PIM grant. But there's still more work to do. And that's really how we focus on, on what's going on. If, if you I've actually seen the transition for specifically Mark's program for when it was visual and performing arts to what it is as a music production program now. Um, it's grown by leaps and bounds. It's grown by interest. Um, we've had kids say, I definitely wanna be in this program. I don't have any desire to be behind the microphone. I wanna be behind the scenes and make things happen and have the other people handle that limelight. Um, because without, the other folks involved, there there are no productions. That's that's for for sure. Um, so I'm just happy to be part of that as we um, as we move forward. But Perkins has been very very good to us, um, and we're able to administer that across the board through all of our CTE programs. We are a very large career and technical education school district. Um, we have three schools with 2,200 students, um, but we are um, you know putting the money where it needs to be, where it's in the classroom, in the equipment, and in the training opportunities for young people, whether, whether it is um, college credits in their specific CTE programs, whether it's industry valued credentials within those CTE programs, um, and just opportunities for work-based learning, whether it's on-site with us or off-site. And I think that's key because as school districts begin to try to get more students out in the field for internships. I think it's important to see what you can do in house just because it removes the barrier of transportation for young people trying to get an opportunity to be able to be part of a production crew or um, a setup crew. If I'm not mistaken, uh, you know, Mark, about 10 minutes before this uh, webinar started, he was over working with the kids who were actually running a county event in our school and they were handling the production side of it for um, the swearing in of our new county prosecutor. So this is really the hands-on piece that we're trying to bring to the kids and they didn't have to go far to do it. They just stayed a little bit later and they're working on it now. So I think as we make those connections, um, I really believe that this type of work is going to grow and we're going to see it grow not just in vocational technical school districts like ours but comprehensive high schools are going to have no choice but to jump on and try to do more instead of just offering random electives i think that they're going to have to really start to fine tune what they're doing to assist more and more young people in the career tech ed area because our um you know enrollment is a finite number. There's only so much, you know, there's only so much room at the end. So um, as we're trying to prepare these opportunities, we work with fellow administrators in our county 
to try to um, you know give them some ideas on what they may able to what they may be able to build in their own districts. That's great, John. And uh, over to Hatha, I think you want to uh, compliment uh, John's comments. Yeah. Yeah, I was just saying absolutely. Um, we everything that we've been talking about here for Sentinella Valley. Um, I think I mentioned where we're at. I don't know if I mentioned what our schools were. We also have three comprehensive, well, we have three high schools, but ours are three comprehensive high schools. And so um, the 11 CT pathways that I mentioned are all within um, our comprehensive high schools. And so just wanna highlight that, that absolutely that is the gold standard because it enables our students to graduate um, college and career ready. Mm, fantastic. and. Uh, sticking on that, so you you are both um, Hatha, um, John, and um, Robert. Feel free to to jump in. Uh, I want to drill in a little bit. We have um, uh, teachers, practitioners. We have de department heads, and we have um, peers of yours that work in roles um, that are similar. And this comes up each year. Are there any, um, and I'll throw it open um, particularly to Hatha, Robert, and to John. Are there any trends that our audience should be keeping their eyes on? We know Perkins is consistent. There's a significant amount of funds that flows into the states every year. But uh, as John just mentioned and Hatha mentioned, you know, uh, comprehensive programs, career training, um, and changes in uh, career trajectory for students. Are there things that you're noticing or that our audience members who are in similar roles, you would recommend that they think about or pay attention to that might be, you know, something that's evolving from what you've been seeking for funding and support over the last few years? Let's start with John and then we'll go to Hatha. Robert, if you've got anything. Yeah, I, I think one of the things that we've done to try to help everybody because we can only serve a, a finite number of kids in our county is we've established uh, a CTE consortium where districts that are offering CTE opportunities in their comprehensive high schools as we are the county uh, vocational technical schools. So we try to provide them some guidance and some assistance as it relates to that. Um, you know, it's all it's also dependent on how they're full district administration looks at what they're trying to do, but we're always willing to um, lend a hand and try to assist in, in those endeavors. Um, our population of our students is our population of students um, and not every child can come to us. So we wanna make sure that as best we can, uh, you know, we try to assist other folks in our county. Thank you, John. Um, Hatha and Robert, anything that you'd like to add in terms of any trends and the way that you're uh, seeking support or funding trends or things that you've had to add to sort of your portfolio of the things that you tracked so that you can best support the programs in your district and school? Sure. I think one of the main things um, that we're experiencing here, um, and it's really, again, this, another one of these things that's kind of exploding is the dual enrollment with um, colleges. And I think I heard Mark mention that as well. And so, um, we are currently under this, um, there's a, something called a Vision 2030 that our chancellor's office, which is our community college's office, as well as our governor has put out um, with the idea that we're looking towards having all students graduate high school with a minimum of 12 units of college credit. So that is definitely something if you're not, like if you're a practitioner, you're not familiar with that concept. Um, I do think it's something that's really coming down the line, looking at post-secondary and how expensive it is and just kind of, I think, you know, there's been a lot of conversations, at least in my world, and I think that's definitely something to look out for and to see, kind of just figure out who's your con um, who's your contacts in your post-secondary institutions, who might be some people to at least just start the conversation. It might take, take a couple of years to develop that relationship, but at least you've started it. Um, and then looking at how to articulate those programs, whether that means that you're offering some of those courses within that high school core day, um, or maybe you're just lining up the curriculum so that students are ready to jump into your college courses. Yeah, I think that's uh, that's really great advice. How about you, Robert? Something you'd like to add? 
Um, I mean, hot to stole my words. <laughs> um, I was going to mention the dual enrollment. It seems like it's growing and growing in a lot of mm -hmm. school districts here and, uh, you know, nearby districts, even, you know, through Long Beach and, and so forth. Um, they're all into the dual enrollment and they're increasing their numbers um, in every field, almost in the industry. And so I'm very happy to actually see that hopefully we can get Luis to also get dual enrollment as well with our local community college where the students can get college credit and high school credit at the same time. So I'm very happy to and very praying that everything will go smooth with this because it does take like hot to mention a lot of collaboration within the school district and your local community college. Yeah, it's a significant amount of work, but um, uh, I, I will share a couple of resources and um, that come to mind uh, given this where the conversation has turned. Mark, I'm gonna I'm gonna um, mention to everybody though, you and I have had some interesting conversations, and Luis and I have talked about this too. But there were some conversations and connections that we made just by me knowing Mark and Mark's program well. Uh, and Mark, maybe you want to comment to them. One introduction that I made was I connected Mark to one of our, um, uh, uh, what I would call a pro school, Full Sail University in Winter Park, Florida, which has significant programming and uh, degree programs around audio and audio production production. And, um, you know, Luis and I have talked about this, too, because uh, sister schools that are owned under the same umbrella include L.A. Recording School and L.A. Film School. Um, but I had visited Full Sail when I came to Focus Right more than three years ago, and I learned that there's a significant high school outreach program. And I put Mark together and made an introduction to the folks at Full Sail. And Mark, tell everybody what happened with that. It was a wonderful introduction. <laughs> We, we really enjoyed it. Um, Full Sail, when I was thinking of going back to school, was an online course that I was even looking at taking. So to mention that to me was just like, bling, yes. <laughs> uh, so that introduction turned out to be very well. So in our, uh, in our rotations, when our freshmen used to come into our rotations, they had the opportunity to choose uh, in the uh, arts or the music and film field because we have um, we have two music courses, music and entertainment production, and we also have songwriting and beat making uh, and post production work that they the other co course does. And then down the hall from me, we have our digital filmmaking class and our TV and broadcast production class. So all four of us were in the same rotation. Uh, so that made sense when it came down to our beat making and songwriting course. To work hand in hand with our digital film uh, course in reference to you know scoring music for their movies and things that age and it also made sense to me for our music and entertainment production course to to connect with our TV and broadcast in reference to live performances streaming all of those kind of things so when we saw that and we saw what Full Sail was offering uh, the connection that Lee made was right on time because uh, we actually in that that conversation, we become a high school partner with Full Sail University. So our graduates coming out of this course, all I have to do is sign off. They did this. This is what their grades were. And they have the opportunity for a $15,000 scholarship for that program to go into one of their, their music or film programs. Uh, so that connection was so great. Um, so great that I even went down to their Hall of Fame weekend. And I spent like four days down there and it was amazing. And the people that I met, uh, knowing some folks, even now they're here in New Jersey, I connected with those graduates and those Hall of Famers. Uh, one who went to my son's church, he was the audio engineer at our church here in New Jersey. So I met him, Brandon uh, Blackwell. And uh, so the connections were great. And the good thing about that, I get to connect my students to those graduates and those alum and their conversations in and their struggle in the real world and the challenges that they face and they get to overcome. So uh, that connection was great with Full Sail University. Thank you. Yeah, I'm glad that worked. And yeah, I was really, really impressed when I learned about that program and I've mentioned it to Luis and many other uh, educators with which we work uh, uh, with as Focus Right Group in Education um, because they reach out to us like tens of thousands of high school educators who are practitioners and thinking about career paths. I'm gonna interject something um, and we're gonna talk a little tech and gear uh, with um, 
our teachers and then uh, administrators, you you may have things to to share. But we'll go into the th sort of the third topical area um, for today before we move toward uh, close. And any questions? And I will remind our audience. If you have questions, as you can uh, have heard, we have a lot of experience on the panel today, and um, there's some really great information that's coming out. Um, I to to Mark and to Luis, when I heard you describe, and I know your programs well because we work together in significant ways. I heard trends. I also heard some very practical. Uh, focuses around what are the skills that we're developing for real jobs, show production. I heard also um, uh, some of our administrators say, you know, it, the behind the scenes is as important as in like front of house and on stage, right? There are a lot of different jobs and speaking from, and I, I mentioned I recently was on a panel about careers at the New Jersey Music Educators Association annual conference, um, we talked about things like preparing for jobs and job opportunities in the audio industry. And I think a lot of students who move into like uh, post-secondary, whether it's a community college, a pro vocational school, or uh, a four-year degree, often think about artist, artist relations. In fact, I, I ask students in, the, in Atlantic City, what kind of jobs were they looking for? And they were all label, uh, maybe live performance, touring, a little bit of conversation about marketing. And like my multi-decade, more than three-decade career has been in the music products industry primarily. There are a lot of jobs on my side of the virtual fence or the focus rate virtual side of the fence, product designers, marketers, there's business that cuts across everything. But then um, there's man there are manufacturers that make gear, there are retailers, dealers expertise that you have in technology and careers could lead to a lot of places on stage backstage touring or at a retailer uh, i was recently in boston visiting uh, with the guitar center pro uh, student who was an alum of boston arts academy the arts high school in boston that was recently rebuilt and uh, Kemet and as Kemet and I were visiting, I, I worked at Berkeley uh, as a vice president there with the high school outreach program for several years. And I met Kemet and his career path, although a great performer and he still plays, was into the business, into working for a retailer, helping in Guitar Center Pro to build systems and to think about systems design. And of course, that includes sales and marketing skills. So, you know, back to Mark and Luis, I hear trends from you. I hear Audinate, I hear Dante, I hear RedNet, audio over IP, right? Being able to use networked um connections, Ethernet, to move aud massive amounts of audio on stage or in a building are important. Those are those are sort of table stakes skills, I would say, moving forward. Another thing that I'll throw out, and, and I know that uh, Luis and Mark are thinking about this, um, I mean, Luis is working on another phase of development for hardware and systems integration in his program right now. We talked about that just today and this week. Um, but there are other things coming. Like I've just recently relocated to Nashville. Here, Universal Music Group is about to build a, a quarter billion dollar campus in Berry Hill, which will have dozens of mix rooms. And this is for film and television for post maybe the largest scoring stage in the United States. There, there are a lot of jobs around um, production, post, and another buzzword that lots of folks are hearing. If you listen to Apple Music and you have AirPods like these, then you're listening to music sometimes in spatial audio or Dolby with Atmos, Focus where We do a lot of work with Dolby uh, around immersive mixing. So more than 5.1, large multi-speaker systems that are given them provide an immersive experience. And, you know, I'm wondering to Mark and Luis, like those are trends. There are going to be lots of jobs in production and post around Atmos, around immersive audio, around more live um, production skills, like you're developing for shows on stage for major tours and in house of worship venues. Like T tell us, uh, maybe Luis, I'll go to you and then to Mark, like, as you're thinking about future jobs and as you're training your students, we heard a little bit about what you're doing today. What are you thinking about for the future? Are there things that you're thinking about adding to help build those skills for your students so they're highly employable and have a great career path no matter where they go next after you? Luis and then Mark. 
For sure. One of the things that I've kind of learned um, in another group that I'm a part of, I'm part of this group called the AME Institute, the Arts Media Entertainment Institute. Uh, I've been a group of CTE teachers in California that are part of the arts media education CTE sector um, that we kind of discovered how a lot of the standards in California were like way off the trends, like you're saying, Lee. And we got to discuss with a lot of um, industry partners. We had some people from Amazon Studios. We had Dolby give us a lot of input as well. Um, and pretty much a lot of the trends was uh, immersive audio. You know, like that's one of the, the trends that we're moving into. It's going to be mixing an Atmos through object oriented mixing versus like your standard panning left and right. Um, and that's kind of like at one point what I would love to end like the capstone kind of like productions with like kids producing stuff in Atmos and having like an Atmos room or having a connection with either a community college or uh, locally we're trying to bridge a connection with 1500 Sound Academy as well. They have uh, this location called, it's called the volume. I can't, or it's called the something, but it has something to do with sound, but like also as a room could be the volume of camera. Uh, but they have this, they have Dolby rooms basically where you could just bring your stems and then go ahead and work in the stuff uh, with the stuff there. And uh, I think my goal is to just constantly chase this like, marriage of finite skills like skills that like have a yes or no kind of an answer with the infinite skills of like creativity right because like creativity there's no yes or no right or wrong you could kind of play around with the rules but in the technical side of things there is a bit of a discipline of whether things work or not right so like and like not getting too stuck in the weeds when it comes to um bringing that uh, very logical, technical side of the brain into the creative process is a little tricky to navigate for me sometimes. I actually went to school uh, for computer engineering. So I just, my brain is functions and ones and zeros. So it's, uh, but at the same time, I have to learn to be flexible with creative uh, minds. And sometimes we end up with those kids. I'm sure Mark can relate to this too. You end up with the really creative kids with the really, like they just think in art. Uh, and then we as educators rationalize and bring all this terminology to kind of break it down. But they're like, it just feels good, man. You know, like that's that's just why they play that that, you know, that note in that melodic progression or that chord progression or whatever, you know. But anyways, yeah. I think it's just trying to figure out how to bridge that continuously and how to mm -hmm. probably focus on uh, immersive audio. Yeah, great. Thanks, Luis. How about you, Mark? What are you thinking about? What are what are some directions you're moving in? I know you've got a lot of exciting things planned. Yeah. Um, well, two things actually. Uh, I am thinking of two trends that I would love to get to. Um, one faster than the other. Immersive audio is is it. Um, I really have to dig into that myself. Um, and so I started picking with it, um, but uh, I, I have to start to develop that within me before I can teach that. But the other trend that I, I focus on heavily is the uh, audio and video technology world. Uh, since we are in this uh, environment with uh, audio over IP, now audio and video over IP, um, you know, being able to move audio and video to different places, that that not only stems from the real world of uh, audio and video from a standpoint, for example, the Super Bowl. I use that a lot as an example. Uh, and the case studies that I see on Focusrite, uh, the same company every year is that production company, ATK. And uh, I make sure my kids understand who that is, what they do, and how that matches what you do here. So that trend, not only taking it from the live stage, now that begins to move you into home systems where people are now in their homes. They want their music in their basement to match upstairs in their big dining hall when they have company and then up on the third floor. So that moves now out of just the, uh, the, the live world and now starts bringing AV technology into the home world. So I'm looking at uh, you know some other certifications in reference to um, certified technology specialists. Uh, for our students where they have the opportunity now to 
uh, to connect audio and video together, not only in the live setting, uh, but in someone's home, uh, conference room settings, uh, big hotel arenas, you know, those kind of things. So that's one of the trends that I'm focusing on more first before the audio, before the, uh, you know, the immersive audio, uh, because I still, again, have to, to, to get myself involved in that trend. Yeah, and those are kind of two that I'm chasing. Yeah, I'll add, and I, I, if uh, our producer can find it, we yet another year, and I'll just say this proudly with my focus right hat on, um, we had more than a hundred pieces of redneck gear for the halftime show at the Super Bowl, and this is a year after year after year relationship that we have in place. Um, I'll, I'll also share, you know. Um, Thinking about the full sale comments before the breadth of um, music, audio, production, technologies, video, gaming, and uh, Dave Riley, who's in the YouTube uh, YouTube stream, uh, answering some questions and chatting with folks, uh, and I are taking, and this is an oxymoron, a pop up immersive rig, because it takes hours to tune it and do the speaker correction for the space. But while we're at Hall of Fame this year in May, we will host not only faculty, but um, professionals and students from the game industry, from film, music mixers will set up in their audio tempo temple and have a chance to, for folks to listen. Because I think one of the issues, and this came up in the a recent panel that I moderated at SAE uh, Institute's Nashville campus on immersive mixing, is, uh, well, what is it? Where am I hearing it? It's one thing to go to a theater or go to a Dolby theater and listen. It's another thing to um, think about spatial in your AirPods, which is is a different experience, but is connected. And then what's it mean to actually sit? And I, I had three Grammy winning mixers on my panel in Nashville um, that Dave, who's in the chat, um, managing conversations today, lined up for me. And the positions were from three mixers. I hate it. I love it. I'm on the fence. And the person who, who who hated it simply said, look, it's not for it's not really p public consumption content. There's so few folks that have access to immersive sound at home. And, you know, he laughed. And for the, the, the mixer on the panel, Rob Burl, who's been mixing since, you know, like uh, surround sound was introduced. Um, uh, Ken Hooper, who was the the naysayer, said, "Look, I'll go to Rob's place and listen all 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 the time. That's a great thing. But until there's a transition in the industry to like really being able to have access at home, but it's coming, right? It's coming very quickly. Um, I'll, I'll also share with everyone. And, and by the way, a couple of things Mark mentioned visiting. For those of you in the audience who want an opportunity to listen, like I'm based in Nashville with Guitar Center Pro, we have a room that is a, an Atom Audio, one of our brands with Focusrite Red Knot. Um, 7.1.4 room for listening. You can hit me up at lee.whitmore at focusrite.com. We recently had um, six schools from five different campuses in Nashville come in and do a listening session with Dave, who's in the chat, who is a Universal Music Group certified Atmos mixer. Um, we also have spaces, uh, speaking about video and, and visual technologies, Mark, we have a lovely room in, in partnership with Black Magic Design in Burbank where there's an Atom Audio S series room in that uh, in that facility. And we do a lot of professional show and tell. And Dave and I will be coordinating an opportunity for schools and campuses. Luis, Hatha, Robert, you'll get an invitation if you want to come to Burbank and take a listen at some point. We have to coordinate it with them. But um, it's something worth listening to. And it's a direction that the industry is certainly going in. So um, we're over an hour. I promised everybody on the panel, given uh, it's late in the day for the East Coast folks and after school for everybody in the West Coast, uh, I just want to make, a, a first of all, a, a comment about um, um, what a wonderful conversation. It went so quickly, and I'm so impressed with everything that all of you do, and particularly how Hatha, Robert, and um, John, how you support Luis and Mark's programs. It's It speaks to, we all know it takes a village, right, to use that maybe overused adage. But I know, having met all of you now and had, having had a chance to talk and being, being there with Luis in school in the program and at, at, with Mark over at Donald M. Payne Senior High School. Um, 
I'm going to just go round robin and ask for any closing thoughts. So I'll give you a minute just to think because I'm throwing a softball, but putting everybody on the spot. But I'd love just a reaction if there's one parting comment for our audience that each of you would like to share. And you don't have to have anything. You can just say thanks and, and we'll see everybody off. But I'll start with Hatha, then Robert, then John, and come back to Luis and Mark. Anything that you'd like to share that we didn't talk about or a word of advice or something that... Um, motivated and excited you in the conversation? What would you share uh, as a closing remark? Hatha? I would just say, don't be afraid um, to get started and don't be afraid for it to be messy uh, and that it takes time. So, you know, a lot of what you've been hearing here is years and years and years of work, um, but it all starts somewhere. And so, you know, you can do it and it just takes time. Love it. Thank you, Hatha, and thanks for your participation today. Robert? Um, I will say one thing that, you know, it's kind of unseen, but I see it is, you know, anyone that can support, uh, support sorry, the CTE teacher in any way, because they are teaching full time. And then so sometimes they get overloaded with things. And so I think my job, and I'm sure John um, and Hoth as well, we all try to support them in any way we can because it is a full-time teacher, a CTE teacher, and there's so many things behind the scene that no one sees, and only the CTE teacher and myself will see this. Mm -hmm. And so it's very, very important to have someone to support the CTE teachers. Thank you, Robert. John, how about you? Yeah, I, I believe the, my two colleagues' comments are, are spot on with time and support, but it's also important for for me to understand and i'm sure they do as well that support from above us is equally as important so our superintendent of schools is is fully invested our county executive as we are county vocational technical school district is is fully invested and that's one of the key things if it starts at the top it resonates through the the the, the channels and the things that are happening in the school and it's just one big support network and, and we're appreciative of, of what the folks that are above us do, but certainly we're truly appreciative of what Mark does on the ground every day with the kids. And I think that's where, you know, not to be funny, where, where, the, where the rubber hits the road is that where that's where it's all about. It's the, the opportunity to mold young people where they will be truly successful after they leave us regardless if it's in the, the music field or not, just that opportunity to work with youngsters and see their level of success is really why all of us signed up. Thank you, John. Uh, Luis, parting thoughts, advice? Relate a lot with everything everyone said so far. Because, uh, yeah, it, it's been a long journey to get here. I'm trying to catch up to Mark. I, I need 10 more years to get there. So... <laughs> Uh, but uh, and, and and it's been messy and it's been, uh, you know, it's been a lot of learning on uh, like all I'm learning and then I relay what I've learned and we're all like, kind of learning and we're relaying things to each other consistently throughout the years. And uh, it's just having patience, I guess, with the process, right, of, of everybody. And uh, kind of like John was saying, I think, and also just reminding myself and then any other educator uh, that you're the one that is the rubber that hits the road right that that's the focus and uh i started this with the desire to connect with kids and to give them something that i never had um and that's kind of what keeps me going every day like that's my goal like to establish something that i didn't have a program like this uh, because i wanted to learn how to shred guitar and you know just just shed like crazy on the drum set like that's what i wanted to do and know how to record and how to use all this Yamaha equipment that I see out in stadiums and in like venues. And that's what I wanted to do. But we only had a marching band, which was great. And I loved it. And I marched for many years and it made me a great percussionist. But I'm trying to create something that didn't exist. And now it does. And I'm part of this group of people that are also trying to do it. And it just really fills me with a lot of joy that I'm part of this group that's changing kind of education. Thanks, Luis. And uh, last but not least, Mr. Beckett, what's hey, your man. parting uh, advice? I, I'm going to say two quick things, but I'll make it sound like one. <laughs> uh, first, uh, if uh, you and Dave, you know, you want to try pop up here in, in New Jersey, I'm always available. Mm -hmm. uh, so my partner, Jacob Lawson, who uh, teaches the songwriting course, uh, he just put together our studio in the back there. 
So if you ever want the pop-up to come through here, we can give it a try, okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Secondly, I do want to say, and I want to end with this, um, it's all about the real world for me. Um, pointing the students to the real world. Uh, my goal has always been to have them see what it feels like, uh, what the real world feels like right here in the classroom. And um, Dolan spoke to this earlier in reference to our students and what they do afterward, but it makes it comfortable for them to be here. Uh, I have eight work steady students right now that are working on that event, that after that event, they get paid. Um, so that's the real world experience. When they see the responsibility that they have to do for this county event, I'm talking about, I have the governor of New Jersey sitting on stage right now. He's here, <laughs> right? And they're running lights, audio, and, and sound for this event. And to, the reward for that is the real world paycheck that comes along with it. They see the hard work that has to go into it. They see the dedication. They see the commitment. They most importantly see the accountability that comes along with their responsibility that they have to have. And that makes it all worth this real world responsibility. I can get paid for that. And that's one of the things that I like to focus on for these students. So, uh, and it's always a joy to be with wonderful people from around the country that are striving to do the same thing. Uh, I, I feel so blessed and honored to be uh, a part of this group. Uh, Lee, you've been a great friend to this program, to myself personally, and what we're doing in the community. So I, I just truly thank you all for this opportunity. And the opportunity for me makes a greater opportunity for my students. So thank you all so much. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Luis. Thank you, John. Thank you, Robert. Thank, thank you, Hatha. What a great conversation. Uh, and I'm almost going to make it. We're going to be like a minute over 75 minutes, but we got close. But what, what a great uh, set of expertise, sharing examples, best practices. And I'll say this to our audience on the way out. Um, I know that the folks that we're working with and talking with here today are always happy to share experiences, and as am I. So feel free to hit us up at Focus Right Group in Education. I'm certainly able to make connections if you'd like to talk with uh, these wonderful educators and administrators or like programs that are near or far away from you. So uh, feel free to look at us as a, as a resource, resource. Remember, we've just published, and if you signed up, you got a, a suggestion to download the third. Uh, this is the third update to our career and technical education um, expert guide which has up-to-date resources about Perkins and state funding and models. Don't miss that. And thank you, everybody, for spending time with us uh, later in the day. Uh, we will email everyone who's attended with a roundup, with highlights from this conversation. And I couldn't be more grateful. So again, thank you to our panelists. Thank you to you, our audience. Next event's coming up for Focus Right and Group in Education starting next month. We will have um, a program around storytelling and podcasts that will cut across music, audio, career, and technical education, um, and more. And then coming later uh, in the summer into the fall, a uh, new expert guide around um, creating music, mixing, and careers for immersive audio, which we spoke about today. Thanks, everybody. Great to have you here. Really appreciate it. Have a great evening. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you.